Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, distinguished guest and research person. Welcome to workshop on the role of science in the development of forest reference emission level. And let me introduce myself first. My name is Sita. I'm a research student in C4, also a PhD student at IPB University. And today, I would like to be your MC. So first, I would like to greet um, the Honorable Dr. Imam Hidayat, Head of the Biological and Environmental Research Organization from National Research and Innovation Agency, or BRIN. The Honorable Dr. Robert Nasi, Director General C4, and the Honorable Research Person, also the Honorable Workshop Invited Guests and Participants. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me first to read the agenda for today. So from the first agenda, we will have introduction from Professor Daniel Murdiarso, C4 Principal Scientist, and it will be continued by the opening remarks from Dr. Robert Nasi, C4 Director General, also Dr. Imam Hidayat, as a head of the Biological and Environmental Research Organization, Dean. And today we will have three core sessions. Session one is Indonesia's second FL 2022. Session two, subnational initiatives. And session three, reaching global like-minded. And at the last, we will have a wrap-up session. And for all attendees, please check the chat box if you have any questions, comments, or ideas. And you can write your question or comment both in English or Indonesia, that's okay. And also can limit the audio during the station so that everyone could enjoy the workshop and focus on the session. At the end of the session, before we leave the room, organizer will share post event surveilling. Thank you. And now before we begin the opening session, we will have photo group session. Please turn on your video. Prepare yourself and give your best now. I will count from three, two, one. Once more, three, two, one. Thank you, and you may turn your turn off your video. So now we, move, we will move to the first agenda, introduction by Professor Daniel Murdiarso. Professor Daniel is currently holds a position as a principal scientist with C4 and a professor at IPB University. But Daniel, you have 10 minutes for your introduction. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sita. Um, my name is Daniel Murtiarso. Um, I am organizing uh, with colleagues at C4 and Brin this uh, very important workshop that is attended um, well in the registration. I've got the report, it will be attended by more than 200 people, but uh, we still have more people to come, I think, as I can see here, only 89 yet. So uh, I hope more people will be coming. So first of all, I would like to thank to the, uh, to Bryn especially, because uh, this workshop is uh, taking place because of their support. I can see today uh, Dr. Mego uh, Pinandito with us, one of the deputies in Brin, which is related to the very topic we are discussing today. Dr. Mego is uh, responsible for policy and development. So I think what we are talking about today is very much in his area within the Brin context. We are also fortunate to have Dr. Uh, Iman Hidayat, who is uh, replacing uh, the head of PRIN, uh, Dr. Laksana Handoko. Dr. Iman Hidayat is the chair for uh, environmental and biological sciences. Again, this topic is very important for our future collaboration with PRIN. So we are very fortunate to have other colleagues also from PRIN who are going to join us in the discussion today. So this uh, workshop was planned quite a long time ago, um, but we have problem with COVID and everything. And finally we have the uh, 
welcoming sort of uh, uh, welcoming uh, response from from Bryn that uh, we can have this workshop with them. And uh, we immediately uh, plan this workshop in order to be able to achieve our objective, which is to report what we've been doing in developing FRL uh, to be used uh, by countries, by Indonesia, especially in the future, how this uh, technical, very important technical thing, uh, which improve the credibility of forest reference emission level uh, in the future. So this is a very um, highly uh, demanded by many countries. So we also collaborate with colleagues in many uh, countries, especially those who are hosting uh, pitland in, in the countries, uh, including uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, and then also in Peru. Um, they have not been doing uh, this kind of thing before. So this uh, exercise will be very much uh, used not only by Indonesia, but also many other countries. Indonesia in itself has been very much leading in this area. Uh, Indonesia has been submitting its second FRL, uh, which is today we are going to hear from uh, the technical team of FRL uh, of Indonesia, which is going to be represented by the advisor of the government, um, Dr. Arif Darmawan, will be with us in the first session to share what has been done in the second FRL. And then we are going to respond on that and uh, share the possible improvement for the future FRL. So uh, this uh, session, this event, is not only uh, improving scientific knowledge about FRL development, but we are also engaging very much with a financial institution because that will be the next thing to do uh, if you know, countries or uh, sub-national level initiator will be uh, trying to develop a um, project and emission reduction, they need to know how the financial stream would be. That's why we are very fortunate today to have PPDLH, the Indonesian Environmental Fund, to tell us about the detail of uh, this financial flow in connection with the uh, carbon economic value, a new uh, legislation uh, within the country about how to link that uh, a carbon economic values into the climate change arena. So that will be uh, shared in the second session. And um, we are fortunate to have a local a developer also from uh, Jambi province, uh, Pa uh, Rudy Shaf is very experienced with the local community. He'll be sharing with us his experience to do that. So uh, all in all, this session really is an exchanging um, experience, how we do from scientific point of view and also from financial point of view and how the bottom-up uh, activities approach can have been done and how you can improve that in the future. So we, uh, C4 and other partners, uh, from scientific point of view, really approach uh, BRIN to see this opportunity to help countries and sub-national level, how to do that in the future. So we will be bringing this up together today and uh, see uh, for the future what would be best to do it. Uh, that's why we are very much looking forward to see the role of science in helping these processes. So uh, last but not least, I am particularly very much hoping that colleagues from BRIN will be jumping into the discussion in the last session. Ibu Juni, I can see you've been there and uh, we've been working together for a long time and also uh, other colleagues uh, in Brin, Ibu Erna, who's been working on the remote sensing arena, uh, that will be very useful for our future collaboration. So without uh, further ado, I um, uh, would like to encourage you as, as organizer of this uh, webinar 
to really extend your ideas. And this is not something bureaucratic, but something very scientific that uh, Bryn is like to really engage with partners in the future. Bryn is a new organization that is going to be shared with us what is their uh, interest and ideas by, by Iman Hidayat later. Thank you very much. Over to you, back uh, Sita. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pak Daniel. And let's move for the next agenda. We will have opening remarks conveyed by Dr. Robert Nasi from C4 Director General. And the floor is yours, Robert, for 10 minutes. Thank, thank you, Sita. Uh, and while I'm trying to share my screen, uh, I will just um, um, give a word of warning. I mean, I'm probably the, the less qualified here uh, about talking about uh, forest uh, uh, reference uh, emission level, but uh, I know a little bit about C4 aircraft, and I, I, I think it would be very interesting for, for you also to, uh, to know who we are, and especially for our colleagues uh, from BRAIN, uh, that I thank very much and for being there, and also for the other colleagues that we know. So C4 aircraft, in fact, it, it, it's a research group with two legal entities, C4 and aircraft, C4 headquarters in Bogor, aircraft headquarters in Nairobi, uh, the Global Landscape Forum platform and, and the Resilient Landscape Initiative. And, and our purpose is really to, to deliver uh, actionable solutions on the role of trees, forests, and landscape in, in solving the global crisis related to land degradation, biodiversity loss, climate change, and sustainable food system and value chain. We are working to solve these uh, five global challenges uh, that I've just that, and that, that in fact are interrelated. And the important point is that forest, trees, agroforestry system are really a, a place uh, where all these challenges meet and where you can have a, a significant contribution by acting on one element uh, in, into more than one of these challenges. Our research perspective uh, expertise is organized around the following topics. We have uh, three engineered forest genetic resources, biodiversity, is about gene bank, uh, tree planting material, and uh, genetics. Sustainable value chain and investment, which is about uh, uh, what all the financing, all the, the development that may affect forests or be affected by forests, all plantation, rubber, cocoa, coffee, all the tree value chain. Climate change, energy, and low carbon development, which is really central for this issue of forever, but that they work uh, on, on different topics like mitigation, adaptation, and, and the synergy between the two. Uh, and I will have a more detail on that. Soil and land health, the whole issue of degradation and, and, and land neutrality, degradation neutrality. And finally, <clears throat> but not least, the governance, equity, and well being. Because a, a lot of the issues we are facing are, are definitely not technological in nature, but political and, and, and human related. So we have an important element on that. We have a worldwide presence. As I said, we, we have a, a headquarters in, in uh, Indonesia and, and in uh, um, Kenya, but we also have activities in all the country that, that you see in green and people there. Uh, since we were created, we have invested about $2 billion in, in research. We have about 740 staff in 30 countries. Uh, 122 active partnership, and, and we are pro produce more than 25,000 research products. Uh, in terms of Indonesia, I mean, sort of here is a map of Indonesia and the place where C4, one of the legal entity, has project underway. So it, it's 19 provinces, it's about AIDS, climate change, rural livelihood, trade and investment, tenure, food and nutrition, sustainability, governance, and gender. So you can see that we are almost everywhere. Okay? But it's also the, true for, for ICAF. And these are the, the research priority in color and, and, and the place where, where ICAF has been active since 1993 in Indonesia. So we have a wide coverage of activities and, uh, in Indonesia, covering a lot of the topics that are relevant to uh, the ministry and brain. In terms of investment in and for Indonesia, we, we have spent more than $200 million uh, in terms of research investment uh, since. Uh, ICRAF uh, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and, and C4 established in 1993. And, and although our mandate is global, I mean, Indonesia has always enjoyed a significant share of our investment in both research and personnel. 
and then we have run one on 152 forest and agroforest forest project in Indonesia since 1993. Uh, now, in terms of uh, climate change, I mean, uh, our research capacity link and engagement is to deliver an ambitious climate policy and action across scale. I mean, <coughs> looking at the increased resilience and adaptive capacity of people and ecosystem, mitigation of land use based emission that generate environmental and social benefit and transition to a circular bioeconomy to integrated production of food by energy and re renewable biomaterial. Our work is very much focused also on gender and social equity and based on regular performance assessment so that we provide evidence based for policy decisions. In terms of red, I mean, it's sort of uh, C4 and ECRAF have had an important impact on the agenda uh, through various programs, including the, the global comparative study on Red Plus that has been running since 2009, and the ECRAF alternative to slash and burn program partnership for the tropical forest margin that has been running even longer, uh, the ASEAN Swiss partnership on social forestry and climate, and the sustainable wetland adaptation and mitigation program that is still ongoing and is run by our dear Pa Daniel. So we have had quite, quite a lot of an influence in terms of uh, how do you provide uh, uh, effective, efficient, and equitable uh, red plus and other mitigation and adaptation solution for climate change? Uh, here are some examples of our policy impact. Uh, the uh, the uh, Green Climate Fund sectoral guideline on ecosystem service and forestry, uh, World Bank Enable Fund, FACT Dialogue, uh, work on UNFCCC with the stepwise MRV, uh, refinement of methodology for IPCC, uh, the ASEAN Agroforestry Guideline in Indonesia, the Red Cross Strategy, the FRL uh, refinement that we are discussing here in Peru, the legal recognition on white deep peatland, Guyana increase in forest monitoring capacity, Vietnam in payment for environmental services and carbon rights. And what, what I want to, to state is the importance of critical importance of partnership. And I've just taken this example at the national level, but this is true also at the sub-national level. And uh, we have strong partnership whether in Gambia, in Vietnam, in Indonesia, of course, uh, in, in Peru, uh, in, in Côte d'Ivoire. And th these are only examples, but uh, given our organization and the way we work, we could not work without our partner and, and they are totally uh, part or, uh, and parcel of our design of our projects and, and our implementation. Now, <clears throat> back to the which is the topic. There are definitely, I mean, it's a critical in any monitoring uh, uh, evaluation process and to achieve the Paris Agreement, because if you don't know uh, where you are starting from and what you are talking about, I mean, there is very little chance that you provide anything in terms of trends or whatever is happening. And here, we, we our scientists have made critical contribution in these MRV and trade processes like uh, the development of IRT or emission factor, identification and quantification of missing sources, the sinks of greenhouse gases, quantification of non-CO2 gases like uh, methane or nitrate, uh, incorporation of mangrove soil carbon following IPCC guideline, and the improvement in frail uncertainty analysis. And here are some examples in terms of the IPCC guideline where uh, we have been uh, instrumental and you will see uh, uh, Christelle Erdwash will present things also in this workshop in terms of uh, changing the guidelines for natural GIG inventory. And then a, a, a subset of uh, publications, scientific publications that were produced by bioscientists and partners, uh, Daniel, Christelle, uh, and, and others uh, in, in, in reputable journal and then help uh, feeding the, the agenda and, and providing evidence based. Uh, um, science-based information for the policy maker and for the, the decision maker. And we would like to, to acknowledge and thank our funder for this important work, and that's the Norway International Climate and Forestry Initiative, NICFI, and the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I will stop here, so back to you. Okay, thank you, uh, Robert Nancy, for your opening remarks and the next agenda is opening remarks by Dr. Imam Hidayat. Dr. Imam Hidayat is current head of the Biological and Environmental Research Organization, National Research 
Research and Innovation Agency or Badan Riset dan Inovasi Nasional BRIN. Please welcome Bapak Imam Hidayat. You have 10 minutes for your opening remarks. Thanks, MC. <coughs> I will not uh, show the presentation actually. Um, a lot of work I see has been done by SIPO. Honorable Director of SIPO, Mr. Robert Nasi, and Pak Daniel Murdianso, Principal Scientist of SIPO. Honorable guests for today's workshop, speakers, and all participants of the today workshop, National Online Workshop on the Role of Science in the Development of Forest Reference Emission Level, hosted by C4 and Green. Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, I would like uh, on behalf of Head of National Research and Innovation Agency, BRIN, Dr. Laksana Trihandoko, I would like to express our deep and sincere appreciation and gratitude to all the committee members for today's workshop. Climate change, this is the very hot main topic of the current workshop now is um, becoming very popular and important words and issue not only for scientists and NGOs working on environment as well as for conservationists and naturalists but this word is also now becoming a very important for politicians or policy maker or even for businessmen and now also common people also more aware regarding climate change and its effect to where they live our home the earth All of us here, I believe, everyone here are the front line. Uh, and everyone here is very concerned about the climate change effect to our life. Why? Perhaps, or maybe it is some of us still want to see the polar bear, the beauty of polar bear in active areas or we want to enjoy the colorful of coral reefs or because we still need clean water or fresh air in our life or even we still need our rainforest to support our life especially in indonesia therefore climate change issue is important for us here especially for Indonesia citizens and all around the world. And therefore, we, we all are have the obligation to take care, to provide a comfortable world to our future generation. Therefore, mitigation of climate change effect to our home is our duty. One of the main points to mitigate the climate change is today point of meeting. There is the forest reference level or forest reference emission level because this is the step for countries need to take to benefit from red plus action. Not only reducing the emission from the deforestation and forest degradation, but also this include conservation of forest carbon stock, sustainable management of uh, forests, and enhancement of forest carbon stock. Red or red plus is poised to be the primary international international mechanism with the potential to reduce the carbon emissions 
Therefore, adequate and predictable financial and technology support for developing such reference level is important and necessary. And today, all of us here will discuss about this. The National Research and Innovation Agency, or BRIN, is a new governmental institution that integrates all previous research uh, institutions in Indonesia, like uh, LIPI, BPPT, LAPAN, BATAN, and other research institutes in several ministries in Indonesia. Now, BRIN is the only government research institute and BRIN definitely have an obligation have a pivotal role in supporting and providing scientific evidence to the implementation of forest reference emission level trail action all perhaps not only being BRIN but all the scientific community, including NGO in Indonesia, also has a pivotal role in red transition from a policy framework to an implementable mechanism through the development of tools for measuring uh, performance, distributing costs and benefits, and achieving uh, the greatest atmospheric and environmental benefits because this the scale of this issue requ requires need integration of government and multi-stakeholder participation um, as we know in the trial implementation the distribution of incentives uh, that will effectively reduce deforestation and forest degradation is generally predicated on the capacity of accurately map assess and monitor changes in forest carbon and so on therefore estimation of uh, gross emission from land use land use change will depend on the area deforestation disturb or regrowing and the density of carbon stock store in these areas and uh, multiple methodologies need to be developed to measure changes in forest carbon at different scales using a variety of of course technologies and improvements in accuracy and efficiency also has to be made by the scientists or scientific community engage with this process in indonesia maybe all of you are here now several gaps that must be addressed in the in the trail calculation uh, especially possibly land cover definition or categorical places issue such as pit uh, land restoration area mangrove area forest degradation, land use change, and so on. Uh, in this case, BRIN as the only government research institution that houses researchers in the forestry and conservation fields, BRIN will fully support the implementation of trail, not only by providing researchers to work on it, but also by providing open access research facilities or research infrastructure for all stakeholders. BRIN also provide, will provide, will support the research funds through various schemes. Uh, at least around seven uh, research grant schemes that can be accessed by all stakeholders in Indonesia, not only by uh, researcher from BRIN and sorry. BRIN also in regarding on this work sorry Pak Iman yes you only have one minute to okay finish. okay funding for capacity building 
for the researcher work on it. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to handle the climate change, we have to unite and work together because uh, we are committed by 20, 30 countries in the world want to ensure all people enjoy peace, prosperity. Indonesia must mobilize, mobile, mobilize resources, institutional knowledge, technical expertise from across our government, private sector, civil society, and research university to help. All are here today. So finally, I would like to add my best wish for all of you for a successful, successful and fruitful workshop. And many thanks to all organizers. I'm looking forward to an excellent meeting and discussion with great scientists today from different backgrounds to find solutions and sharing new and exciting perspective for the implementation of frail action. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pa Iman, uh, for your opening remarks. And now we want to move, we will move to the first session. Indonesia's second April 2022, and this session will be moderated by Dr. Sigit Safmito. He is a researcher at the National University of Singapore. He specializes in tropical mangrove ecology, blue carbon, mangroves and climate change mitigation and adaptation, and mangrove ecosystem functions under human-induced disturbance and climate change. Over to you, Pak Sigit, you have 30 minutes for your session. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Sita. Um, yes, uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. Um, Sigit Sasmito. Um, so uh, today I will be moderating uh, this current session and the session uh, aims to provide the uh, opportunity for us to, to understand more about the uh, development and the improvement of the uh, forest reference uh, emission level, uh, particularly when Indonesia already submitted second uh, FL uh, this year. And uh, to discuss that, uh, we have uh, three speakers lined up. Uh, the first one is the Dr. Uh, Arif Darmawan from University of Lampung. Uh, he will be uh, describing or discussing the, the FL development and the improvement for the second FL. And he is also replacing the uh, Dr. Saiful Awan Anwar from the uh, Director of the Greenhouse Gas Inventory uh, Ministry of Environment and Forestry. And then the second uh, lineup uh, speaker is uh, Krista Hagulaj. Uh, she is a scientist, a new scientist in, uh, with C4. Uh, she will describe more about the uh, improvement of the uh, ethyl. Uh, and then the third speaker is the uh, Dr. Oswaldo Carillo. Uh, he is a statistician and, and uh, he, he has a basic knowledge or uh, 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 expertise on the uh, statistical, particularly uh, in the applying the uncertainty analysis for the FRL. So um, without further ado, I think uh, it's uh, time for pa Arif Darwan. I will invite pa Arif Darmawan to, to present uh, is uh, material, Ari, are you there? Yeah. <clears throat> so you, uh, this session uh, will be a uh, uh, presentation, uh, seven minutes presentation, and hopefully in the end of the session, we can have the time uh, for the discussion. So I will notify you uh, when the time's about six minutes. Yeah, thank you, Pa Sidit, as the moderator today. Um, good afternoon, everyone here in Jakarta time, uh, good uh, night, maybe in other time or good morning in other time. So um, uh, my name is Arif. Actually, I uh, I uh, I replace Pak Director, our Director for uh, Inventory of uh, Greenhouse Gas uh, of the Ministry of Forestry as our leader actually in this undertaking. Actually, uh, many of my colleagues here as the team of EFREL also uh, attending this meeting. We, I see the, uh, Professor Haruni there and uh, Pak Solihin and yeah, Pak Daniel also include, <laughs> include 
in the team, yeah. But yeah, I just uh, uh, told by Pak Solihin this morning. So I'm sorry if uh, my presentation here is not too uh, convincing for you. But actually, this is what happened to uh, with with the with the process, yeah. So I will share you the uh, the process of the frail, yeah, yeah, within our team. Uh, I hope seven minutes will be. Uh, use yeah. Um, okay, so uh, my presentation is about the development of uh, Indonesia's second forest reference emission level, uh, and then uh, in the minute. Um, okay, so uh, for the background, uh, the forest sector shares the largest contribution to the NDC's emission reduction target. That is 17.2% uh, out of 20, 29%. Yeah, using own resource pit uh, means uh, more than 50%. Yeah, from total, uh, from 29% using our own resources and 24.1% out of 41% means both of them uh, more than 50%. Means that. The forestry sector shares more than 50% contribution to the NDCs, yeah, with the uh, both uh, using our, our own resources and uh, with international supports. So, uh, to achieve this fairly uh, large forestry sector target, Indonesia undertakes various mitigation actions through GSD emission reduction activities in the forestry sectors, particularly through red implementation. And um, uh, we uh, all know that Indonesia's first trial has gone through a technical assessment process in 2016. And luckily, I also involved in this undertaking and has been legally used as a reference in measuring red plus performance to, uh, to obtain result based payment for the period 2013 to 2020. And uh, we actually, uh, Indonesia actually has. Uh, how can I say, yeah, receive yeah, the result-based payments from the Green Climate Fund. I don't know, it's about one, 100, 100 million US dollar. Uh, I don't know the exact number, yeah. And it's uh, for the, uh, its contribution or significance from, uh, for achieving the uh, reduced emission from the reforestation, uh, from deforestation and forest degradation from 2016 to uh, and 2011, yeah, at 2016 to 2017, yeah, and then uh, uh, now also we are um, in the process of gaining uh, technical, uh, how can I say, tech TA, uh, technical um, technical analysis, yeah, from the BUR or. Uh, our second uh, result-based payments, yeah, from 2018 to 2020. So based on this uh, first frail. So uh, basically, 2013 and 2020, we use this first frail, and then after 2020, uh, we need to have a new frail, yeah. So that's why Indonesia's second frail includes most of the improvement plan in the first frail by considering new data improve methodology and broader scope of anthropogenic activities. And this uh, second trial will be um, legally used as a reference for measuring red plus from 2020 to 2030. Yep. Uh, so it's uh, also uh, in line with the NDCs. Yeah. So uh, the first trial and the second trial, what is the difference? So this is uh, mainly uh, the different, yeah. Uh, in the activity data, the first trial is only used the deforestation and forest degradation in mineral and organic soil. In the second trial, we add the deforestation, forest degradation, and enhancement of forest carbon stock in mineral and organic soils with fires and emission from um, in, um, conversion of mangrove forest. In the full carbon, in the first frail, we only uh, input the above ground biomass and emission from pit decomposition 
and in the second trial we use uh, more whole carbon which is uh, above ground biomass below ground biomass dead wood litter and soil organic carbon although not all for all red plus activities and in the gas in the first trial we only use co2 in the second trial we use co2 and non-co2 emissions that is the co ch4 methane and uh, nitro nitrogen oxide yeah and 2o from forest and land fire activities and uh, for the gross and net emission in the first trial we use uh, gross emission but in the second trial we try to apply net emission approach uh, in the uh, fifth topic for the wetland emission tier uh, we only tier, we use tier one yeah although we assume it as tier two because most of the emission factors come from indonesia for pit decomposition and in the second trail we use tier two emission factors for pit decomposition pit fires and also uh, mangrove conversion and uh, for the last for the uncertainty assessment in the first trail we only use a very simple root uncertainty from activity data and emission factors and in the second trail we apply adjusted areas for activity data using sample based area estimation following all of some 2014 and Monte Carlo simulation. So this uh, most of the difference, yeah, most of the update uh, in the first and the second trial. Wait, and uh, what about yeah, the progress uh, submission January 10, and then review April to May, and then resubmit May 30 uh, May uh, last May yeah 2020 at 2022 yeah, after reviewing. And then who's involved in the second trial progress? Yeah, mostly uh, this undertaking led by the DGCC, yeah. And then uh, research institution, universities, consultant, and NGO are uh, assisting, yeah, this uh, this work, yeah, by uh, the facil uh, facilitation of DGCC of Ministry of Forestry. And what is in the document? So we have eight chapters there. Uh, this is still um yeah uh the sample draft yeah the the the, the cover draft uh in the document we have introduction improvement from previous submission definitions area activities and full cover data methodology and procedures and then uh, result of the construction construction of forest reference emission level and then description of policies and plan and their implication to the constructed forest reference level and also the opportunities for improvement so uh, this is the last i think uh, the key message from uh, from this uh, work yeah the first is uh, working with many institutions that need extra time but when the process can be lead proportionately it may it has many insight and also hand to finish the work and then significant improvement has been made by the second trial by considering new data improved uh, technology and broader scope of anthropogenic activities and the uh, frail and red class in general has made significant progress on how Indonesia provide improved quality data and also networking, yeah, especially expert academicians and researchers on forest monitoring. So that's all for me. I hope uh, it will fit with the time. Thank you very much. Oh, back to you, Pak Sigit. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Pak Arif Dermawan. Uh, it was a really nice uh, summary on the improvement of the second level. Uh, of uh, Indonesia that already submitted to UNFCCC uh, this year. So uh, the second uh, speaker uh, will be uh, Crystal. Uh, Crystal, you want to present? Can, can you share my slides, please? Can the assistant share my slides? Can someone? OK, uh, thanks. So seven minutes. And also for the participant, if you have questions, just uh, put it in the chat box and we will discuss later on. Thank you. Thank you. Next one, please. So this is a presentation that we put together with the uh, Vasolihin Manuri. So I'm, well, I'm going to go um, a little bit more into the details of what has just been presenting, presented. Sorry. Uh, regarding the comparison between the 2016 FREL and the 2022 FRL. Next, please. So just as a background for those who are not familiar, uh, there are five 
type of activity that can be considered in red plus. And in this presentation and in, in, in the case of Indonesia, we are, we are going to focus on these three uh, type of activities, um, reduction of deforestation, reduction of forest degradation, and enhancement of forest carbon stocks. Next one, please. Um, as defined by the IPCC, there are uh, six uh, carbon pools that can be considered uh, above, ground, uh, above ground and below ground live biomass, dead wood, litter, soil and wood products, and three main greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. Next, please. So if we have a look at the first activity, which is considered in the Red Cross by uh, the government of Indonesia, and if we compare uh, the two, uh, the FREL and the FREL, uh, in terms of activity data, the main improvement is that now we have gross deforestation, but that considers post-conversion land cover class which means this is an, uh, um, a great improvement and it's much better also than net deforestation. It also includes uh, associated fires. Uh, therefore, um, in, the new, in this new frail, um, we, uh, there is a, an accounting of net emissions since uh, as mentioned earlier, there is a post-conversion land cover class stocks and emission factors considered. In terms of pool, uh, so uh, here there is the below ground uh, biomass, uh, which is considered except in um, some exceptions to exclude double accounting, dead wood and litter also in only for fires and the soil, but uh, the soil that's in the case of wetlands for pits, uh, pit and mangrove soils. And so uh, of course, um, a potential improvement, improvement for our next iteration would be to add more pools that are relevant for uh, national greenhouse gases emissions. Uh, in terms of greenhouse gases, in addition to what was uh, accounted for in the previous frail, now um, methane and nitrous oxide are taken into account, but this is only for a uh, fire. Next one. In terms of the activity related to reduction of emissions from forest degradation, um, in the present FREL, um, forest de there is a consideration of one level of degradation of forest, uh, or one level of forest degradation and associated fires. And a further improvement could be to uh, disaggregate degradation into two levels. In terms of uh, pools, uh, it's basically the same um, uh, history uh, picture as we just saw for deforestation, except that for soil, uh, we don't have a consideration of mangrove soils in terms of forest degradation. Uh, and in terms of greenhouse gases, it's also the same as for deforestation. Next one, please. Um, for uh, enhancement of forest carbon stocks was not previously considered. So it, this is a, a main uh, improvement in, uh, in the accounting. And so at the moment, what is uh, considered is forest gain. So non-forest to forest conversion. And a potential improvement would be to consider uh, the transition secondary to primary forest. Um, at the moment, uh, the pools that are considered are uh, above and below ground, by bio, live biomass and the soil, uh, well, only for peat soil, and the, the gas at, uh, for this first um, uh, inclusion of enhancement of forest carbon stocks is uh, uh, CO2. Next one, please. Um, in terms of uh, the improvement of carbon stock data and greenhouse gas emission factors, so there has been uh, 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 work done on the national forest inventory and how this, the data from this inventory was uh, used by uh, updating, by using, uh, by applying uh, recent tier one and tier two allometric equations. And uh, so in this uh, FREL, there is also uh, inclusion of carbon stocks for non-forest classes. 
Regarding emission factors, um, there is um, a tier two a CO2 emission factor for pit decomposition that was developed by the technical team. However, uh, this uh, updated uh, emission factor doesn't follow the IPCC computation method when uh, carbon inputs to the pit have been on omitted. Um, and then there has been an improvement of uh, uh, the emission factors for fire and pit. Fire on pit, sorry. Next one, please. So the specific improvements for wetlands are the inclusion of emissions from pit fires and the emissions from mangrove conversion to aquaculture and cultivated lands. And a potential improvement for the next rail would be to consider emission re reduction from uh, reweighted peatlands and converted mangroves. Next one. I thank you for your attention and would be very happy to answer your questions. Okay, uh, thank you, Krista. Uh, really uh, intense presentation and really uh, the topic is really uh, follow up with the previous uh, presentation by Parik Permawan on the further improvement of the uh, FRL. So uh, next, uh, we're gonna have the presentation from uh, Dr. Osvaldo Carillo uh, about the another improvement of FL, but uh, focus on the uncertainty uh, analysis. But go ahead, Swaldo. Uh, okay, well, good morning, good evening, and good night, everyone. Um, well, I would like to share some topics related to analyzing uncertainties in the development of the forest reference emission level. So, well, um, as context, I would like to comment that uh, the Annex to Decision 12 of COP17 established that the information of the forest reference emission level should be guided by the most recent IPCC guidelines. And well, according to the IPCC, uncertainties estimates an, an essential element of a complete GSG inventory. So it is very important to, to elaborate or to estimate the forest reference emission level focus on the uh, carbon accounting. But on the other hand, it is very important to quantify all sorts of uncertainties, to combine uncertainties and to estimate uncertainties. So but what uh, those, uncert those uncertainties are? First, uh, let's remember that to estimate the GSG emission, we need to multiply activity data times emission factors. And when you estimate activity data, uh, it is usually to use um, maps, and maps are models, and these models have errors. On the other hand, when we estimate emission factors, uh, we here we use samples and models, and once again, this has errors. So when we estimate the G GSG emission, well, it is expected to uh, it's expected there are errors in the estimation of emission and removals. And this, um, these errors expressed in percentage are known as uncertainties. That's why it is very important to quantify these several sources of uncertainties when we elaborate a forest reference emission level. Uh, but I would like to emphasize other point. Why? Thus, it is important to quantify uncertainties for a frail. First, because, because it is a good practice to count as far as possible all sorts of uncertainty. And on the other hand, it is because uh, the quantification of uncertainty is a requirement in several methodolog methodological frameworks. Um, uh, uh, for example, for the Green Climate Fund, for uh, it is required to quantify uncertainty, and there is a score depending on the level of uncertainty we reported in the frail. But on the other hand, also, there are other base payment initiatives like FGPF of your carbon fund, and there is a reservable buffer that depends on the level of uncertainty. Um, this is why also it is very important to quantify. Um, also, um, 
when we do the uncertainty analysis, we have the opportunity to review the complete process that we follow to elaborate the forest reference emission level. So when we implement an uncertainty analysis, we need to go back and we can review uh, if we are using adequate methods and models, and we need to go in deep um, in a deep understanding of the approach we are using. When we have reviewed the methods and models, we go back and it is necessary to review the realistic assumption that we are using to elaborate uh, the forest reference emission level. And in particular, to review how we are, we are going to ensure to prevent bias. And finally, when we have uh, reviewed the realistic assumption, we go back to review the scope of the available information. So when we do this uncertain analysis, we have the opportunity to review all these methods, assumptions, and methods and inputs available to elaborate the forest reference emission level. To address a comprehensive uncertainty analysis of the forest reference emission level, so first we need to prevent bias, then we need to quantify the uncertainty of emission factors and activity data, and we need, and then we combine uncertainties. And to combine uncertainties, we can use several methods. One of them is um, uh, method one, and the other one is method two that I am going to talk more about it in next slides. So in particular, to address a comprehensive uncertainty analysis uh, for the case of activity data, well, according to the uh, method and guide guidelines document from Global Forest Observation Initiative, it is recommended to estimate activity data based on samples or based uh, or sa on samples and um, data combined with maps. When we use activity data, uh, we can estimate activity data and prevent bias and estimate uncertainty uh, by using a combination of samples and maps. And as it was shared, explained at the first of this um, session, in the case of the second frail, it was used a combination of uh, maps and samples. In that way, we can prevent bias and we can estimate uncertainties. Um, on the other hand, regarding to, uh, here you can see another very interesting uh, picture. Um, in, the rest, in the last seven, eight years, several scientific papers have been developed to estimate or to improve the estimation of uncertainty of unbiased activity data. And as you can see in this um, green bars, and red bars. In the recent years, most there are more countries that are reporting activity data using a combination of maps and samples. Um, well, and this is because there are more information available about these methodologies. Uh, regarding to regarding to emission factors, here I would like to comment that well, there are several sources of uncertainties, like those coming from measurements from the sampling and from models. And of course, there are se several um, uh, statistical methods to estimate uh, is one of these sorts of uncertainties. Um, finally, I would like to comment that for the for combining uncertainty, there are, according to IPCC, there are two methods. One of them is the simple error propagation equation, but there are all the one that is Monte Carlo simulation. This is a, the most robust method uh, that is suggested by the IPCC. And it was the method used uh, to combine uncertainty in the second frail. So what, uh, about, uh, what is coming about uh, uncertainty analysis in the near future? Well, once again, I would like to emphasize that the use of Monte Carlo simulation is a requirement for several, several programs or several initiatives. And also there are new sophisticated sample-based methods to reduce uncertainty of activity data. And also there are new methods and new efforts to try to remove the correlation between variables to reduce the uncertainties of emission factors. And also 
uh, there are new tools in development to implement in a more correct way and more comprehensive um, uh, to implement a more comprehensive uncertainty analysis, in particular using Monte Carlo simulation. And well, thank you for your time. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Asfaldo, for your uh, presentation on the uncertainty and how we can improve the uncertainty for, for the uh, FL, but also for the uh, carbon based uh, project at the uh, local uh, scale. Okay, um, I think uh, we are now in the uh, discussion session and we have really, really uh, limited the time, maybe five minutes or less uh, for discussion. I can see a few questions uh, for Crystal, but I think Crystal already uh, answered the question directly to the chat box. But uh, Crystal, if you would like to to answer us like quickly uh, on the two questions that you received. Um, yeah, I think there was a question about where to find information on um, um, carbon sink from uh, the soil. Um, and, and making reference to allo allometric models. So I think there is a confusion here. Allometric models help to quantify carbon stocks, but if we want to quantify how much carbon is uptaken by the soil, uh, we need to use emission factors. So there's a difference between what is a stock and what is a flux. And so um, default emission factors are available in the wetland supplement of the IPCC. And um, because the IPCC doesn't consider natural systems, I also put a reference to uh, where to find um, this emission factor for uh, undrained uh, intact pits from forests. And then uh, Imam Basuki had a question regarding uh, how um, uh, accounting of fires in pitlands, well, in wetlands basically, could improve uh, the frail. And so I just clarify that we need to account for these emissions to uh, establish the, the, the level, which is before uh, the um, uh, implementation of a red scheme. And apparently this is clear now to Imam. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Crystal. Um, so we have uh, actually one or two minutes of, of the discussion session uh, because this is the first session. So if you, there's no other question, I have uh, one question for, for Pa Arif. Uh, so you are part of the team of the FL, uh, the second FL and also the, the first FL. So uh, while Osvaldo uh, mentioning about the uncertainty, uh, could you elaborate more about the, how uh, FL being developed uh, by including the, the new uncertainty analysis uh, in the second FL. Yeah, um, thank you for the question, Pa Sikit. Uh, actually, the one that can answer is Asolihin, yeah, <laughs> a bit better, but I, on, I only uh, can answer the, the, big, the big picture, yeah. In the first FL, we only use the error propagation, yeah, that come from specific data and also of, uh, emission factor and then it's also uh, very very simple yeah we we use a similar uh, error for emission factor and also similar not similar yeah? very simple simple calculation for uh, calculating the uh, uncertainty and within this second FL we use very um, very uh, complex yeah very uh, sophisticated method yeah for uh, calculating the um, the uncertainty. That's why I think the second FL has better uh, touch yeah, in this uh, uncertainty assessment. Yeah, even I, I in the in the in the in the very detail I also uh, maybe cannot follow. Yeah, very 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 in the in the detail. Yeah? Maybe uh, my my colleague can help me on this. Yeah, but that's uh, the answer from me, Pasigit. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and also probably uh, the participants are uh, uh, just just know and hear about the FL. Uh, could you also like uh, provide if, the indication? If we have time, I can add. 
maybe uh, okay Masukin. yeah so related yeah. with the uncertainty analysis uh, correct we previously we use only error propagations but now we use uh, the monte carlo simulation which also includes some uh, error propagation calculations but the most important thing is that the uh, we also include the uncertainty analysis of the activity data. So maybe Buana later we uh, can explain about that. That we follow the Olofsson approach to have the uncertainty of the activity data, like deforestation, forest degradations, which previously we only use the uncertainty of the land cover map. So this is something uh, significantly different. So in addition to uh, Mas Arif uh, uh, explain. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pak Sulihin. Um, Pak Daniel is raising hand. Do you have any comment? Thank you, Pak Sigit. Um, my question is going to Osvaldo. Uh, you mentioned about those uh, payment or uh, methodological uh, framework. Uh, what, what is the implication if in your uncertainty analysis, your FRL, which is the product of emission factor and activity data are very uncertain? Are you getting less payment? How do they calculate this or discount it? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Well, the first point is the, um, according to these um, methodolo methodological frameworks, there are some requirements. Uh, one of them is, first, you need to quantify uncertainties of activity data and emission factors. And the other one is that uh, you need to use Monte Carlo simulation to, quanti to combine uncertainties. In case those uncertainties are very high, uh, well, uh, in the case of, um, I will share my screen because I have this, this table. Um, can you see? Yeah. Okay. For example, in the case of Green Climate Fund, well, if the uncertainty is um, smaller, sorry, if it's a mistake, is smaller than 30%, well, you will get a score of two. That means that it's a good score. Mm -hmm. But if your total uncertainty is between 30 and 50, you will get a score of one. And if you have an, an uncertainty higher than 50%, you will get a score of zero. Uh, but I mean, this is a, a, a part of the, in the case of the Green Climate Fund, this is only a part of, uh, of other, uh, of other um, items that are, quite, uh, that are evaluated. In the case of the FCPF of your carbon phone, uh, there is a reservoir buffer. And this is the, this um, this is the reserve buffer that will be disaccounted uh, from the emission reduction, depending of the level of uncertainty. But to answer your question, um, Professor Daniel, uh, if you have a uncertainty higher than one hundred percent, the reversal buffer will be only fifty percent, because there is a good understanding that, um, that, well, that uncertainty can be high. In fact, this is happening very frequently. Thank you, Oswaldo. Thank you, Oswaldo. Uh, it's a uh, nice uh, explanation. So, um, yeah, I think that's a wrap for, for the first session about the uh, FL development uh, and then FL improvement upon the Indonesia second FL submission this year. So we look forward uh, the document will be available soon uh, when once uh, the document is approved by the UNFCCC. So um, I think so, so. We can next uh, we can move to the next session. Uh, we'll back to uh, Sita as a. Thank you.